Here we go. What is going on, Cover One crew? Welcome back to the show. Hope everybody is doing good. Man, today we're diving back into that draft guide as fantasy football draft season is vastly approaching. And we're talking Trevor Lawrence on the draft guide. I know there has been a lot of, you know, negative discussion when it comes to these Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence. What is he going to be? You know, a lot of people jumping off the ship saying, you know, it's done. I don't, I don't trust the Trevor Lawrence. I don't trust this Jacksonville Jaguars team to even throw a stick at because because they just have not been producing the way that we would like and especially with the losses some additions this year it is very interesting to see what these Jags could be in 2024 and what is Trevor Lawrence gonna be as we see his ADP absolutely drop in like a fly but let's talk about what Trevor's done these last three years his short career in the NFL and I'm going to start right away off the start. You know, it's five of his last games were boom games. So that is a big positive on why we can discuss anything good about a Trevor Lawrence to suggest, you know, he was starting to figure things out last year. Yes, he dealt with some injuries. I'll touch base on that as well. But I mean, OK, overall season over season, year number two to year number three, we did see a little bit of a drop off, which was interesting as well. Having a guy like a Calvin Ridley be your number one target, seeing injuries with a Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram having a very very good season. You see him drop from QB8 to QB13. The interesting aspect about a Trevor Lawrence, when we talk about him statistically speaking, his boom rate increased even though his stats went down to uh, 303 uh, uh, fantasy points to 276 fantasy points year over year. But he did see an increase in his boom rate from 64.7% to 75 on the boom rate. So everyone's going to say, how does that even work? What are you talking about? And I'm telling you right now, the difference was on year two, we saw Trevor Lawrence boom in a very big way in certain subsets of his games. And then it absolutely was on the lower end this past season. That's that's why the inflated rate of the boom rate. So he was giving you lesser uh, right on the cusp of the booms last season still to earn himself a boom game where the season prior he was booming in fewer, but he was booming heavier. That's why his point totals were uh, that much more inflated. So, I mean, you got to take it with a grain of salt, but it is an encouraging sign. The fact that he is 75 percent boom rate means he was means he was figuring out his game to be a little bit more conservative, not to turn the football over and still was able to move the football down the field however it did not you know give them a playoff spot and again the injuries definitely did pile up last season 53.3 percent of Trevor Lawrence's contest last season last seven games excuse me was earned uh, uh for his total point totals last season in the last seven games I should say it that way 53 percent so I mean you could see as the season did go down did go on Trevor Lawrence was improving his stat lines and was able to garner a lot more point productivity could this bleed over into 2024 I do believe so and I think where we can pick them right now the value is supremely high St uh, statistically like I said completion percentage very similar year over year I mean we're not really gonna take in part his rookie season it was absolute crapshoot with Urban Meyer so we'll take these next two years and suggest you know 66 percent 65 percent he's on that threshold of you know improving in that sense over 4,000 yards these past two seasons 21 TDs last year to 25 the season prior respect and I mean, so you can see at least where the floor is starting to be set for a Trevor Lawrence. Where is his ceiling going to be? I still think we haven't hit that. And I think a lot of people are still getting a little bit you know, nervous about that. So like I said, 276 points last season, 17.3 points per game. We're 303.6 on a 17.9 per game. So you're even seeing, even with the point totals increasing, the boom rate is what we're looking for because it will bring you more consistency down the line where you're not going to have to worry about him having a bad game and then creating crippling your team had five top 10 finishes last year seven the year before so there was a little bit of a cooling off period but again I think injuries and playing hurt did dictate a lot of terms last season 620 attempts even when uh, Tre Trevor Lawrence was not on the field so you know they're going to continue to throw the football who did they really uh, you know replace in this running back room or help out the cause in this running back room it's basically the same cast of characters with a Travis Etienne with a Tank Bigsby with a Dearness Johnson so I Johnson so I mean it is what what it is and I think they're still going to try to be this you know a potential high octane offense with some additions like I said that they did have so I mean I am not out on the you know basis of saying stats did not produce they absolutely did finish as a QB 13 where he was QB 8 in his uh, second season so yes there was a slight drop off so we're expecting bigger and better things from a Trevor Lawrence this season but let's talk about that injury history man there's a big problem with these injuries 
He's got a laundry list of them going all the way back to his rookie season. I'm only highlighting these past two years, 2022, and I'm only thinking I've given him one from 2022 where he had at least three or four. He did have that pedal toe strain back in 2022, but last year he dealt with a plethora of injuries and ailments. He had the concussion grade two. He did deal with an AC joint sprain and it kept him out of, uh, yeah, I believe it kept him out of that one contest, and then he surprisingly came back. He was supposed to be out for longer, played injured. So it did show his metal, showed his toughness to be back on that field. He did have that high ankle sprain, grade three, which also was a big concern, and then a knee bruise. So you see, man, he was a frequenter to that medical room last season, which is unfortunate, which did also, you know, I think aid in the fact of the lesser numbers where we should have seen higher numbers come from a Trevor Lawrence, especially with Coach Doug Peterson. They're just scratching the surface, man. QB Whisper in the house. He is going to continue to progress a Trevor Lawrence in the right direction, I do believe. But we got to mark him down as a mid-level risk for injuries because he does deal with so many of them. You go and look at his injury report. It is daunting how many times this man is nicked up, but he's still playing. So, I mean, he's, he hasn't missed a contest. He only missed one contest in three seasons. So that is a very big positive as well for a Trevor Lawrence. But I get the fact that you're saying I'm a little bit skittish on the injuries because he does find himself in that medical room quite a bit. I completely understand the sediment because it is a very big problem. Talking about this offense, where we see these Jaguars going, like I said, same cast of characters, Travis Etienne, Christian Kirk, and Evan Ingram. Those are your three. They got rid of Calvin Ridley. He went and signed with the Tennessee Titans. And I mean, vacated uh, statistics here. 76 receptions for 1,016 and eight touchdowns from a Calvin Ridley. That is not going to be easy to replace by any stretch of the imagination. They went and got themselves a Gabe Davis, Gabriel Davis, former Buffalo Bill. And I mean, we'll see what he does. I've always been a Gabe fan. I think he is on the lower end of the alpha. He can make big plays. His hands just continue to fail him. He was, I mean, fighting his own hands. You know, that's a big problem for a Gabe Davis. They did draft rookie Brian Thomas. Statistically speaking, you see where these guys are. 58 receptions for an Etienne. 57 for Christian Kirk on an injured season, almost 800 yards. Gabe Davis last year with the Buffalo Bills. 45 receptions, almost 807 TDs. So you're almost going to be trying to rebuild this offense in the aggregate where Trevor Lawrence won't have to focus on just one guy, even though you know he's got the best chemistry with somebody like a Christian Kirk, with somebody like Evan Ingram. I mean, this dude had 114 receptions last year in an Evan Ingram. Unbelievable year. Almost cracked 1,000 yards, 4 TDs. Started slow out the gates, and then when Kirk did go down, they did start feeding uh, Evan Ingram quite a bit more, and I don't foresee that changing whatsoever. So if Gabe Davis comes into this offense, Brian Thomas comes into this offense, and, you know, they ease them in while Christian Kirk still is the number one guy. You got to believe best chemistry on the team, and I've always been, you know, kind of dogging at Christian Kirk saying, you know, he's a good wide receiver. Is he a great wide receiver? I think I got to bite my tongue now and say I think he's in that above, you know, almost in that great category for being what he is. I'm not going to say he's the lead by any stretch but this man just makes plays and him and Trevor Lawrence definitely on that same page Etienne you don't foresee his role going anywhere in this past game he should still get anywhere from 45 to 60 receptions and that's going to be a positive so we'll see the biggest you know x factors in this offense helping promote a Trevor Lawrence this season is going to be Gabe Davis and rookie Brian Thomas can they absolutely start taking the top off of defenses will they be able to stretch the field absolutely they can because Brian Thomas can run we've seen Gabe Davis stretch the field keep defenses honest which is going to promote better running upside for Travis Etienne, give Trevor Lawrence more time to throw the football. They also lost Zay Jones, 34 receptions, 321 and two TDs. That's off the books as well. So you got to replace almost 1,300 yards, 100 receptions, and 10 TDs. This is not going to be easy, but one of these guys definitely has got to step up. So you got to believe inflated stats coming to Christian Kirk. Inflated stats was continuing with an Evan Ingram. And then who's going to pick up the rest of the meal? It's going to be Gabe Davis, going to be Brian Thomas. Are they going to split it between the two of these gentlemen and hope they get you know really good in this sense I do believe it's going to happen this offense is not as bad as a lot of people do believe and that's why I don't understand why Trevor Lawrence is falling down these rankings and we're seeing it right now he sits behind guys he's right now the quarterback 15 overall 103 man this is absolutely bargain shopping for a potential elite quarterback in this league this is crazy talk and I'm all in on this ADP because the value is far too good if you're one of these guys 
guys that waits till the uh, later rounds to grab your quarterback. D uh, Trevor Lawrence is definitely one of these guys you got to keep your eye on. He's at quarterback 13. Jaden Daniels, rookie, is ahead of him. Jared Goff at quarterback 14 ahead of him. Uh, Trevor Lawrence slots in at uh, QB 15. Another rookie, Caleb Williams at number 16. And then they're just disrespecting a Justin Herbert, my dude, Herbie, at quarterback 17. So here's the point even. You can suggest even say Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert. Why is their value so low? Understandably, it's circumstantial because of offensive. I would make the argument as well that it is Herbert, um, you know, way lesser down the board because they lost guys like Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. That's a lot of productivity that those Chargers lost. But when it comes to the Jaguars, it's not that big of a deal because you lost Calvin Ridley. I get it. Ridley's a good wide receiver. This offense should be able to still continue to hum and move down the field with a Trevor Lawrence, barring any major health issues. Hopefully he can, you know, don't, don't take such big hits. I mean, that's basically the MO. Protect yourself, protect your body, and then I think he's still going to be able to. Has he been a little bit overrated? Maybe. We will see that. But I think Trevor Lawrence at quarterback 15, you can make an argument with a tra uh, Jared Goff. Absolutely. Goff has been playing lights out to take over Trevor Lawrence. But when you're talking about a TL over some of these rookies, man, you got to understand you're going to see growing pains in these rooks. What's your ceiling for, you know, Jaden Daniels? 4,000 yards? Is he going to crack that? I mean, Justin Fields never hit a 4,000-yard season. We will see. I do like Jaden Daniels. I do like Caleb Williams. They do got a lot of weapons on those clubs. But don't sleep on a Trevor Lawrence. I think the ADP absolutely is screaming value if you wait on your quarterback down the line without question. When we're talking about what these Jags are going to be, Third season right now with Trevor Lawrence and a Coach Peterson. That is an absolute uptick for me. You always want camaraderie. You want chemistry building, and you want it to be consistent. And being with Coach Peterson, you're going to see this should be another step in the right direction for this offense, how they want to produce, how they want to build. I think that is a very big sign. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did sign that big contract, five-year, $275 million extension. But they did lose Calvin Ridley, like I said, added Gabe Davis and rookie Brian Thomas. This is big, okay? Brian Thomas is a baller. We saw him at LSU. We saw what he was able to do with a Jaden Daniels. There's no way that this isn't going to work, right? I mean, barring anything that, you know, the chemistry building, you know, they can't get on the same page. Brian Thomas overrated. Potentially, we'll see. I mean, I, I like Brian Thomas a lot, and I think he's going to be stellar. This is going to be a good offense moving in the right direction. Youthful talent, speedy talent, able to stretch the field, only going to promote better stat lines for a Trevor Lawrence. They missed the playoffs last year. Are they going to bounce back? That's got to be the threshold, right? I mean, year prior to that, they made it to the postseason. Then they missed the playoffs. I believe it was 9-8 and eight record and just missed. So you got to understand... It was not a great season last year. Like I said, injuries did preclude a lot of that. Christian Kirk went down. Trevor Lawrence had issues. I mean, Etienne was banged up from time to time. Adding to the defensive side of the football, you got to believe we'll hopefully get the football back in Trevor Lawrence's hand and they will be able to move the ball forward. Biggest caveat you got to say is stop turning the football over Trevor Lawrence. He has dealt with a lot of interceptions where a lot of people want to cuss a uh, Josh Allen type. I mean, 14 interceptions last year, eight the season before, and then 17 in his rookie season. So he has been prone to turning the football over quite a bit, and that is crippling his squad. If he can limit those turnovers down to at least eight to 10, we will see a massive upside once again for a Trevor Lawrence is it a big leap in year four I mean we should have seen it this is basic we got to be fair okay we're talking about Trevor Lawrence you got to be fair this is basically year three for this man because we got to throw out the Urban Meyer rookie season because that was an absolute you know garbage train so Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say major leap in year four. Is Trevor Lawrence overrated? Biggest question mark I think a lot of people are having right now. First overall pick in the NFL draft when he did come out. Is he overrated? I mean, he's not. He's okay. He's better than somebody like a Ryan Leaf. Let's be real. But is he overrated? Was he, you know, pegged to be the next franchise superstar in the NFL? He's shown flash. He's shown very good play, but he's also, also shown very much drastic performances that do not promote good football. But I do believe it's on the uptrend. I really do. Signed his contract. He's got nothing looking over his shoulder. Now it's time to play some football. You did add these pieces, like I said. So my projections as we sit today, 17 games. I'll give it to him. He's played almost all the games so far in his uh, NFL career. He's only missed one last year. I'm going to say he's going to play a full season. He's going to stay healthy. 4,215 yards, 24 TDs, and 13 interceptions. Based on my models, I think this is fair, okay? Rushing upside almost 300 yards on 65 attempts and 
more, three more touchdowns added to his stat line. This would give him a 70.5 on the boom rate potential this season, which would land him anywhere from QB5 to QB7 with 334.4 points. This is good value for where you could get him at overall 100 and whatever it was. I'm all in on Trevor Lawrence based on his value. I do believe, especially in super flex leagues, if he's your quarterback too, you should be pretty happy with that. If you are building your roster by waiting on your quarterbacks, you can absolutely snag yourself a Trevor Lawrence and feel pretty comfortable with it. Would you have to hedge bet? I would wait. I, I really would. I'd wait until like week three, see what Trevor's doing, and then you're going to have to go shopping if he's not producing. But I think the value is far too good based on what his numbers could potentially be, based on what he's already shown up. Us. and then the new weapons that they do have on this team. I think they're going to be able to spread the football quite a bit around, and Trevor Lawrence should have a very good season. But there you have it. That is Trevor Lawrence on the draft guide. I know a lot of negative speak is on this man right now, but I am in based on where we can grab him and based on the potential return on investment. It is going to be good, but nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts. What do you think of the Trevor Lawrence? You in, you out? Throw them in the comments. Tell me why you're out if you are out, because because I'm curious to see where you guys are at, but we'll see you next time. I am out.